vertebrae is defined as an animal without a backbone. So your cleaner shrimp, starfish, anemones, and even all the snails that you find around the tank have no backbone and are called invertebrae. Well, that's a clown in a tank, but these are seahorses. They very clearly have a backbone along with other bones and are considered a fish. A seahorse's digestive system works differently than other fish. They require multiple feedings, and brine shrimp, while it's okay to feed, it does not contain the fats and amino acids that a seahorse needs. My macros would be in serious jeopardy if it was part of a seahorse's diet. Luckily for us, this is a false fact. When I first started keeping seahorses, I put four erectus in a 29 gallon tank. I used macroalgaes to try to help with filtration, and it was beautiful, but I was in that tank every single day doing maintenance trying to keep the water parameters stable. You need 30 gallons for a pair of seahorses. Trust me. While I love my reef tank, even in looking at my little slice of the ocean, I can see 20 different things that would harm my seahorses, or my seahorses would harm them. Think about acros. What happens if you brush up against an SPS? It closes, right? If it closed too long, it would die. Now imagine a seahorse hitched there all the time. And if clowns eating so quickly, Seahorses eat slowly. They would starve in a reef tank if they had to compete with fast-eating fish for food. While you don't want seahorses in a reef with fast-eating fish, there are plenty of gobies and other slow-eating small fish that work well with seahorses. Fusejaw.com, linked below, is a perfect place to find great tank-made advice. Tell that to my boys. <laughs> my males breed and give birth every 30 days. It's definitely false to say that seahorses won't breed in captivity. My biggest male has now been with every single female that I've added to my tanks. That's going on four women now. <laughs> While seahorses will try to get with the biggest female they can find, if she's not available, they'll take whatever is. Again, he's been with every girl. It is wrong to take seahorses from the wild. That's why it's so important to buy captive bred seahorses. What is more threatening to them is their habitat being destroyed and the seahorses being harvested for Chinese medicine. This false fact is actually why I decided to do the video. I cannot even begin to tell you how much happier and healthier my seahorses got when I added power heads and wave makers to my tanks. They need to be covered, but flow is good. Tank bred or tank raised might mean that they are in pens in the ocean. That does not protect them from parasites, worms, etc. When you buy a captive bred seahorse, that means something. That means that the breeder took the time, love, energy, money, etc. to raise them from fry, to wean them onto frozen foods, to keep them happy, healthy, and grow them strong so that they can become your pets. Always buy captive bred seahorses. I thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. I'll have the uh, how-to video out in another day or two.